Two Desmo Sadici models are raced by Ducati in the MotoGP class. The official team and Prima Pramac drive the GP24, while Grassini and Pertamina Enduro VR46 use the GP23 from the previous season. It has been observed that both of these motorcycles can contend for victories and podiums with varying regularity, despite the fact that they are from separate years and have differing specs and performances. Mark Marquez possesses a GP23 since he races for Grassini. The Spaniard claimed at a news conference that there is little difference between the two bike models. There are no justifications for Mark Marquez not to be competing for the title, as he will eventually acquire the most recent version of the Desmo Sedici in 2025. Although the rider has been more cautious this year, next year won't be the same. He promises that although the present gap between the GP23 and GP24 is significant, four seconds per race is relative. Welcome to Bike GP. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates. It's true that Marc Marquez has already provided Ducati with input and remarks, and the firm is taking those into account. As Davide Tardozzi stated, his insights are invaluable to the team, but Peko Banyaya bears primary responsibility for the bike's location. It's true that Marc has previously provided us with input, and we are considering it. However, a large portion of the credit for the bike's success at this competitive level goes to Peko. Due to Marquez's immense influence, the Borgo Panigal manufacturer selected him for the factory team in 2025, even though Jorge Martin was supposed to receive the position. Pedro Acosta quickly became well-known in the MotoGP world. In just his second Grand Prix, the Red Bull Gas Gas Tech 3 rookie placed third, and he has proven his capacity to compete at the top even in less successful times. Taking notice, Jonas Folger did not hold back in praising the young Spaniard. Hervé Poncharal, the manager of the Tech 3 KTM team, believes he will have two number ones in the 2025 MotoGP season with Maverick Vinales and Enea Bastianini. Tech 3 is having a great year as KTM's Gas Gas branded satellite structure, thanks to four podium finishes from star youngster Pedro Acosta through seven events thus far. Augusto Fernandez, a teammate, has only 13 points compared to Acosta's 101, and KTM plans to reorganize its MotoGP strategy such that four factory bikes bearing the KTM brand will be fielded in 2025. Regarding Poncharal, he has fielded a lot of great riders over the years. Nevertheless, his most well-rounded lineup to date consists of Vinales and Bastianini, who together have won 15 Grand Prix races. According to Poncharal, 2024 is already shaping up to be a dream for Tech 3. We've been able to demonstrate our power and move the project forward as a team, all around the RC16, because of Pedro. A new phase has begun for us. Although Pedro won't be in our garage anymore, there will be some sadness, but we will have a crew unlike anything we have ever had. Poncharal continued by saying he thought Vinales and Bastianini could both win races on the RC16. As the only rider to have won Grand Prix on three separate motorcycles, Suzuki, Yamaha, and Aprilia, in the contemporary MotoGP era, Vinales is truly unique. Before he agreed to his new Ducati contract, Marc Marquez was questioned extensively about whether he could still work for KTM. KTM was mentioned as a potential substitute before he defeated Jorge Martin in the thrilling race for the desired motorcycle. If Marquez and Pedro Acosta could ever establish a dream team wearing KTM colors, is that ever realistic? With due respect to the brands, I will not disclose Plan B or Plan C, he said to AS. I made it quite evident that a Ducati was my first priority, because I didn't initially feel like making another significant adjustment after making one last year. I had to decide whether to turn red or stay where I was. I was able to choose the option that I liked the most out of the two that I had. Marquez, though, had nothing but praise for Acosta, who might prove to be a future adversary. This year, Acosta's transition to the Premier class has gone smoothly. To which MotoGP rider does Marquez look up to and offer advice for a bright future? Pedro Acosta, as I have always said, he replied. People are coming in droves and leaving quickly. Peco and Martin demonstrate it. Then Pedro Acosta shows up and acts in a different way. He doesn't currently have the experience to be in charge of every circumstance. However, he does show up and behave differently. Does Marquez think the young talent is himself? He said, yes, yes, yes. I saw Dani Pedrosa, Jorge Lorenzo, and Valentino Rossi when I got to MotoGP. That is now Pedro Acosta, who will succeed very well if he is calm and patient. Next season, 
Marquez and Acosta will be factory rivals rather than teammates, possibly even when the title is at stake. Marc Marquez has explained why he declined a Ducati contract condition at first. Martin was first offered the coveted factory seat by Ducati. However, there was a catch to the deal. Marquez would automatically be elevated to the official team at Martin's cost if he won the title this year. Marquez rejected the conditions, but Martin did. Why? That's easy, he said to AS. Having the same weapons is necessary if you have to earn it on the track. This is one reason, and the primary one. And I don't have them anymore. Marquez was talking about his current Grassini ride, a year-old Ducati. Martin has the newest equipment, as do title rivals Peco Bagnaia and Enea Bastianini. It's not an excuse, though, Marquez added. I'm demonstrating my ability to compete. Furthermore, I made it quite evident that I would not be switching to a different satellite team. And the third thing is that, in addition to having sports contracts, players also have sponsors. One sponsor has supported me throughout my career, and they are excited about an international company that will close in September and be open for the following two years. It was not viable. Marquez made it quite evident that he would not accept switching to Promac, who could have fulfilled his dream of a GP25. This surprising position effectively caused Ducati to reverse their initial decision to give Martin the official bike for the upcoming season. The remaining stages of this year's championship match, which Martin is presently leading, will now unfold with the subplot of Martin joining Aprilia and Marquez joining the Ducati factory squad in 2025. Since forming a partnership with KTM, Tech 3 has been a team that helps fresh riders get their start in the MotoGP ranks. Acosta followed suit, but the Spaniard was the first to demonstrate that the RC16 really had the capacity to let older, more seasoned riders contend for the top spots. Acosta, who has already placed fifth five times, has performed better than the official KTMs and has been a great ambassador for the Austrian bike. The fact that the team was able to recruit Bastianini, who is in his second year with the official Ducati, the best bike on the grid, and functioning at a high level, is a testament to the potential that can only be indicated by such performances by a rookie. The current champion, Peco Bagnaia, and the Italian were vying for a position until recently. However, it should be noted that KTM gained recognition as a viable option during the period when Aprilia's factory was still open for business. Maverick Vinales, a rider with years of experience and victories with Suzuki, Yamaha, and Aprilia itself, hails from Aprilia. This year, he has already made history. It's no accident that the Spaniard thought the RC16 was a bike that could go on creating history. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe for new upcoming videos of MotoGP. Thanks for watching.